Okay, this next video is with the guy that got me started wood turning, Tim Yoder. He is a great guy. Be sure and watch this whole video from start to finish. You won't want to miss what Tim is going to show us. See how this works. Okay. This is a brand new camera. I've only had it about two weeks. <laughs> this is another thing my wife is on to me about. Oh, okay. you chickens. Oh my God! Well, yeah. Are they leaving? Yes. Who's going to watch the booth? I, he will. Okay. <laughs> so I'm here at the uh, at the uh, what is this? 2019. The 2019. 2019 uh, AEW Symposium right. in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay. And my hero, Jim Yoder. <laughs> He's the guy that got me started turning. I saw him on a Saturday morning show. Watched another one, another one, another one, and I said to myself, if that guy can do it, I can do it. Absolutely. And you can't so, learn from perfect. That's why you watch me. <laughs> so from there, I bought the lathe, and a year and a half later, I sold my business, and I started doing it full time. You sold your business I, to do this? Yes, I sold my business to do You're this. You're crazier than me. I did. Let me tell you. How you doing? I had a lot more money back then when I had a business, Yeah. but I wasn't near as happy. Oh, man. So I'm a lot happier now. I got no money, but that's not everything. Now, see, I'm in the point where I don't have no money right now. <laughs> but I, since I quit my day job, maybe I'll have some money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what do, what do you got going here, Tim? Well, this is my uh, foray into being a businessman. Okay. So for years, I did the PBS show, and then we started doing shows on YouTube. Oh, and don't let me stop you. And look, look, you're not going to be in the way. <laughs> That's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, Pe go ahead. People in the business yeah. kept saying, put your name on something. Uh -huh. And I didn't want to just put my name on anything. So I developed these tools that you see here because uh -huh. uh, I had some issues. When I was turning, I oftentimes... You come around where you can hear him. <laughs> I oftentimes wanted to make um, sy symmetrical marks. Yeah. So I, I couldn't find a zeroed ruler that I liked. Also, the rulers were this thick, so holding them up to a spinning piece of wood was dangerous. So I decided let's make a thick ruler, and then you can hold this up to the wood while it's spinning, and then you can make your symmetrical oh, marks left and right. Yeah, I see. But at the same time, it's like, if I made it that wide, I can't waste it, so I turned it into a regular ruler. Okay. So people can do regular marking. At the same time, it worked out that now it's a square. And then I figured, well, let's put a slot in the middle in case people want to make a mark on a piece of wood through the center. That's right. So yeah. You can square something up with exactly. that. Exactly. Like an end piece. There. Yeah. And then this was the next thing that came out. I have a bad habit of turning something, and I wind up losing the dimple. So I, I lose do that my too. center. Yeah. So it's round. I don't have a dimple anymore. How do I find the center? So I developed this. It has a scale on it. So if you lay it down and you match up, say, the five to the five and the five to the five, that's my dead center again. This also was designed so I could go corner to corner real fast and draw my oh, X. Yeah. The problem I had with regular rulers, you hold it and it spins and right. moves. Yeah. So I put cork on the bottom so it'll get on there. So I make a big one and I make a small one. So it's just something I was trying to figure out a problem I was having. But the first thing that got me into making tools was the angle gauge because this was where I was having the most difficulty. I would get asked to demonstrate at times. Mm -hmm. And every time you do a demonstration, well, what's the uh, angle on that grind? <laughs> and I would tell them, you know, 35 or 40 or 60, you know. And then one time I'm getting ready to do a demo, I thought, well, I better really check this out. So I got a, ga a gauge, a really big thing is an awkward thing that came in and measured and did the scissors on there. And I got my uh, measurement and I'm like, oh crap, I thought I was at 40 and I was at 27 the whole time. It's like, oh, this is ridiculous. So I woke up at two in the morning with this idea how to do this. It's uh, either a ninja death star, throwing star, or it's uh, Lisa, Simpson, Lisa Simpson's hair. So off the Simpsons, if you look at yeah, the shape. Yeah, I see that. But the whole idea is, is that I wanted, didn't want to stick my tool into like those brass gauges they have. Mm -hmm. So this, you simply lay it on there. And if there's no gap here, you've got the right angle. So if I was trying to do a 60 degree right there, I know I'm short. Mm -hmm. So I have to adjust where I'm grinding and grind more of the toe off than the uh, heel. Yeah, yeah. And then, I, okay, so I figured I could do, this is for spindle and roughing, spindle roughing, and then this is a spindle roughing, and then bowl, bowl. And then the cool thing was, when I started to get into negative rake scraping, people always asked me what my angles were on this. 
And so I do a 75, and then that little relief there is actually a 15. So you can okay. put that yeah. up there. Okay. Plus, I wanted to make sure that skews and parting tools were covered. Mm -hmm. So you can put your skew and your parting tool in there to figure out what your angles are. So the part of the skew would go in this way, and you'd see how wide your angle is that okay. way on a skew. But if that fits in there perfectly, I'm at a 45. So that's what broke this whole thing through, was me coming up with this idea. And then I wound up putting cork on the back of them so they're easy to hold. But they're cut out of stainless steel. And I had to find somebody who could do that, and I found a Hasty Bake, who makes the Hasty Bake cookers. Okay. They actually cut these out with a 5,000 kilowatt laser. No kid. Yeah, and so they put a, a four bay foot sheet of steel up on this thing. They cut all these out and then they send them to me and there's tabs on them. So I have to grind the tabs off, I have to deburr all the edges, I have to do all the brush work. And at a time I was taking them to Fab Lab, which is a great place where you have access yeah, to lasers I know what and that things. Is. Yeah. I would spray a thing on here called Ceramark. Mm -hmm. And Ceramark, when the laser would hit, it would make the black lettering. Only problem was is that the laser, if it was off, or if your spray was off, you'd lose some of these and have to clean them up again. So I found a silk screener who's braver and all get out. So he silk screens all my tools right now. Wow. And it's great because uh, it's a, a lettering that is meant for industrial use. Mm -hmm. So it holds up really, really well. The only issue is, is that when you ask a silk screener to do something that's as detailed as this or a ruler, yeah. if he's off a little bit, he's got to take it all off and do it again. So hopefully in the next month, I'll get my fiber laser. And the fiber laser will actually etch this in black and it'll in, be in there and it'll be a permanent mark. That's sweet. But that's the worst part and the best part about owning a business. Yeah. You're not making a profit for the first five years. Oh, I know. Because, I mean, everything in this booth is something, oh, I gotta buy that, I've gotta buy that, I gotta buy that. I've got one, two, three, four, five televisions. I've got another camera over there showing my hollowing system. So the big question to everybody out there that's Even hearing I this is, how did you get her on board with this? She just said, keep doing what you want to do. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's what mine does. She yeah. She said, if you're happy doing it, I'm happy. Exactly. When I got, I used to turn on a Delta 701 lathe with a little bitty thing on angle. And I literally turned like this walking through my shop because it moved. <laughs> and I was so frustrated with it, and we had just done the prototype for the wood turning workshop for PBS. Yes. And I'm looking at stuff, and I'm looking at stuff, and she said, what do you, you know, what need? And I said, well, I could get away with that, I could get away with that. She said, no, what do you need? Get what you need. So I got the Stubby from Australia, Stubby 1000. And I actually had to take a loan out against my car to do it. But, okay, I didn't realize how good a turner I was until I got on a lathe that was solid and well constructed. Yeah. And when Stubby went out of business, I'm looking for my next lathe because I don't want to do videos with something people can't acquire. Yeah. And Robust was there, and bless her pee pick and heart, I just called him up out of the blue one day and said, hey, I'm doing this, would you want to be part of it? Sure. And American Beauty was at my door in two weeks. Wow. Yeah, and it is incredible. It's a beautiful machine, I know. It, well, it's, I don't mind if you buy something from China or every, everything else, but there is some value to American yeah, made. They're absolutely. They're in Wisconsin. I have a problem. I can call them up. You can even drive to their showroom and talk to them. Seven-year warranty, things like that. I'm not trying to sell it, but this is why I like it. And they'll fix anything for you. And, and it's just great to work with people who are wonderful people. Yeah. And then the same with Thompson Tools. When I first started the, the uh, PBS show, I'm at my first symposium, and I'm looking for sponsors for our PBS station to make the show. And I go to Sorby. And Sorby's like, nah, I don't think so. Well, I had a shop full of Sorby stuff. And they, I, you know, I get them. Some guy comes up out of the blue and says, hey, you want to sponsor a TV show? No, get away, you know. So I ran into Doug Thompson. And within two seconds, he's like, sure, what do you need? I'll send it all to you. And the story behind Doug was he started making tools because he couldn't find the ones he wanted. And then to start his business, he would go do demos at clubs, sell his tools, turn around and hand the money back to the club. And when I heard that story, I went, I want to be associated with him. Yeah. So it's, that's what I like is the integrity of the people you meet and the friendships you make in this yeah. are invaluable. I don't want to get rich not cherishing that. You yeah. have to have that as a priority. Yeah, absolutely. But then the, bene the bonus to that is the kindness of people. When I started making these, let's go over here. My, uh, I have a, a friend in my club 
that I'd known for years. And he developed, Stan Townsend developed the elbow tool. And I started using this on the first year of wood turning workshop on PBS. And it's a phenomenal hollowing system. Well, when he saw that I was making those tools three years ago, he said, do you want the elbow hollowing system to sell? And I said, well, I can't afford to buy you out. And he said, no, just take it. Yeah, and so he gave me the rights to it. He gave me enough parts to make 10 hollowers. And so when I sold those, I could make 20. And I started the hard knocks course of learning how to manufacture. And so tell me how this works. This attaches to your quill. And so it clamps onto the quill, which is the tail sock is one of the strongest parts of your lathe right here. And so then it articulates out. When Stan invented this, it was the first articulating hollowing system on the market. Uh, the first year he was at AAW, he was all by himself. The next year he said there's about 10 booths selling knockoffs. And out of that, there's only two or three that are still in existence or ones that have modeled off of it, but they've done something different and it's cool. They've, they've improved it and stuff, so that's not bad. You have to move on with time and keep improving. But this is so, it's fingertip control. And what I like about it is, you can very gently do cuts. And since we're at the AAW, I can't put the face shield on and talk to you, so I'll just do a demo That's here. Fine. Yeah, but um, it is such a, a gentle and easy to handle, rather than having a full captive system that goes way out three or oh, four yeah, feet. I'm familiar with that. Yeah. I got one I bought five or six years ago. From, yeah. Uh, Mile. Yeah. And it's great for certain projects. This is great for other other yeah, certain I projects. Yeah, I saw yours on, on your, your TV show. Yeah. When I first saw it, I thought, man, that was sweet. It really is. I mean, because you're right. The big one I have that I got from Lyle, it works great, and I've done a lot of great hollowing with it. But this one is it's compact. It's, it's, you yeah. Can set it up in two two seconds. Oh yeah. I mean, it, you pick it up like this, take it off, and it's off. And it stores away. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. You know, yeah. Well, the only thing that was missing on this was is that at the time when I got it, the Stan was selling Ron Brown's laser on here. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to make my own laser for this, but I have a day job at the TV station. I'm the product, production manager for the TV station that I work for. So this is all nighttime stuff and weekends for me. And my wife kind of remembers what I look like. Um, but anyway, so I wanted to make a laser that improved upon lasers. And it took me two years to develop this. The, um, it's made of aircraft aluminum. And right here is my pride and joy on the whole thing. There's a couple things here. This laser took me two years to find. So it's a laser that is built for a machine environment. So it's meant to be in around drill presses and dirt and dust and all this sort of vibration, heat, cold. Um, it also, it's got a glass lens in it instead of plastic, so it's a really accurate uh, laser when it comes out. It's focusable, so you can change the size of the dot depending on how close you are to the work. Uh, I have one at home that, I, well the first one I got, I've got probably 80 lasers at home that I've gone through. I bought, I mean, a thousand dollars worth of lasers. When I found this one, I put it on the paint vibratory machine for 10 minutes at Lowe's, didn't do a thing to it. So then I've got one that's still burning a year later at my house. Paint vibrating? Yes. Yes, that same one is in my bathroom. I don't know why I put it in there. Somebody said, do you need help aiming? And I said, well, no, I got it going to the ceiling, but good idea. Um, <laughs> but it's been burning for a year now, nonstop. Never have turned it off. And so I, I love the endurance of it. It's really good. I used to be a battery guy, but once I realized the battery one's the the vibration affects the batteries, the springs, the buttons, and sooner or later that laser you have to throw it away. And it's really hard to find a button laser that has an on-off switch that stays on. It's all momentary, so you gotta do a clip That's or right. something like that. Yeah, yeah. So this cable hangs back here by the tailstock, so it's not in the way of anything. You're not gonna have any danger. You have lights and stuff on your lathe already, so this in the back isn't a big deal. So then I developed it to where this is a hollow tubing, so the line goes through it and comes back up to the front. This whole piece, let me grab the other one, is machined out on the base, so the line goes up inside. So that tucks the line and gets it out of the way. But what I really love is in on the top, I've got these little handles well, on the top of this one over here, I'll show you, is that when you do a, <laughs> run out of hands. Thank you. 
So, I don't know if you can see through the plexi right here, if you can see the dot on my finger. Okay. Okay, so when, I'm gonna kill you on focus, but when you come back up here now, when you do these main big lasers, right, you always have to adjust it back here and you swing this whole arm That's back right. and forth to get that where you want it. Yep. I couldn't do that because every time you tighten it, the last bit it would move, it drove me crazy. So this is adjustable here. So I want to adjust this to where I want it. So I get it, okay, that's where I want it. Just hold my finger here and go here and it hasn't moved a millimeter. So it's real quick setup and you get a two inch range with that, the way it's built. So I'm just real proud about the fact that I answered all the be. problems I had. And it goes, there's a hole in the elbow tool so it just screws up in there. The aluminum sucks up tight to the steel. It, it, it has no vibration so, unless you're rocking and so rolling. Where, where can one find this? Where can one buy this? <laughs> On uh, woodturningwithtim.com. Okay. Or the shortcut is wtwtim.com. Okay. Yeah, and we, uh, you can see more of it. We have uh, videos on that website. We also have about 200 videos on YouTube right now. And if you just look for Wood Turning with Tim on YouTube, you find those. Okay. And we're and they'll, at... They'll tell them they'll be down in the notes, down in the show notes. Okay, they'll be fine, yeah. Down there. Yeah, so all the info will be in the show notes, yeah. And the nice thing is, we're up, we're trying to, what I'm learning about the business is, since I was with PBS, never made a dime on it because I was an employee of the TV station. So you can make money off Amazon, you can make money selling DVDs, you can make money making tools, and you can make money uh, doing hollowing or demonstrations, but you can't make a living off one. So if you diversify, then you have a better shot of getting enough income to make it worthwhile. So one day I might be able to drop the day job at the TV station and then put this in full time, which would be wonderful because then I could sleep a little later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I retired uh, 10 years ago when I sold my business and started doing this full time. Yeah. And so for me, it was just pure joy. I didn't, I didn't need the income. Right. Um, I mean, I wasn't rich, but I, I was comfortable. Yeah. And uh, so I could devote every minute of the day, and I did. Every minute I was awake. And after about two years, my wife I came in one evening late from the shop, and she said, you're having an affair, aren't you? And I said, ah, you call me. She said, her name is Nova, isn't it? <laughs> I had a Nova DVR. Yeah. So that was our big joke is the whole time I was having an affair with Nova. Now I know a really nice robust lady that you might want to have an affair with. Okay. <laughs> you know, robust, I'm into robust. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am a dealer and she's an American beauty, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, that's awesome. Hey, that was a great piece with Tim Yoder, wasn't it? Check the show notes down there. There's links to his site. You need to check out his products. He's a great guy. He's the one who got me started turning. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. Check him out.